Alrighty, credits. Credits. All right, this is probably gonna get muted on YouTube, probably blocked on YouTube. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna mute this music anyways, cause more than likely it's gonna be blocked. At the very least, it's gonna be copyright claimed. All right, so I gotta speed run through my thoughts. Uh, thankfully, I don't have a ton, ton of thoughts to go through. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll do this however I can and, you know, try to save some time. All right, so Final Fantasy X has been conquered. Woot, woot. Um, my, I didn't, I didn't write down my first impressions for this game, uh, primarily because when I first played this game, however many years ago, uh, I wasn't really feeling it all too much, and it, it didn't really catch my interest, and I, for the first two days, I felt very similar to that, and that's probably just because I was going into the game with, you know, like, past uh, preconceptions and, and whatnot, um, you know, like, I already had an opinion on the game, and so... Those first two days were me either deciding, like, is this going to be my opinion? Or, you know, maybe my opinion needs to, you know, slide out of this, you know, something like that. Um, but, uh, so that's why I didn't uh, write those down. Uh, but for my overall thoughts, I imagine uh, I will get 36 unfollows for this. But... I didn't, I didn't really like it that much, uh, which kind of coincides with my feelings of uh, when I went into it. Um, I, I legitimately don't actually think the story is interesting enough to, to have kept me invested. And, uh, one of the things that I don't know if I specifically say this. I I do, so I I guess I won't get into this too much, but I didn't like any of the characters. Um like not not a single one. So, uh I I just had a really hard time being invested in what was going on because there were some some elements that occurred that just didn't it didn't feel like they got the 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 maybe the attention that I would have hoped they would is maybe a poor way of saying that, but uh yeah, I, I it it's it is what it is. Uh so for the story, was it satisfying? Uh I'm I'm gonna say I'm I'm going to I'm going to say it was satisfying. It it didn't necessarily do what I hoped it would do, but it it was satisfying. You know, we we got the end that that I guess we deserved. Uh there's certainly elements that I wish would have happened differently. All right, we're we're uh You know, let's let's just mute it. Uh, I can't mute it for myself. All right. And I'll just uh, reduce it on, on stream too. Uh, so yeah, I, I just... I, I think there's just some things that I was interested in that the game didn't necessarily tackle. And I'm sure I mentioned this at some point in the future as well, but I didn't like... Titus being the protagonist. I think there are other characters that would have been better protagonists and would have done things and had character development associated with them because they were the protagonist that would have made me latch onto those characters more. Uh, does it feel complete? I would say overall it feels complete. There's, um, there's, there's some, some, leftover things that 
I'm curious about for sure. Uh, you know, Maester Micah, you know, I'm, I, am I just to assume that because sin has been stopped, that all the dead people are just not dead anymore? They're, they're, they went to the far plane or something like that? Like, uh, I feel like Maester Micah is a very big antagonist, and I, uh, I don't think that's really addressed at all. But I, I would say for the most part, it feels complete. How was the pacing? I think the pacing was okay. You know, we were staying on track for the most part. Only got sidetracked a couple of times. But, you know, it was solid. Uh, thoughts on the story? Uh, I have here, I haven't found myself being interested in the story very much. I wish it was told from Yuna's perspective. Uh, I would have... Uh, it would have been far more interesting to be a part of her internal struggles rather than viewing everything from the lens of Titus, who sees and understands nothing. Um, Titus, Titus is kind of annoying. It's also really, really annoying that Titus being a dream is not tackled at all in the plot. Because that, that deserves to be a major plot point with you know, major character development, major conversations happening between uh, the characters, them having to deal with that reality. And the fact that they just, they, they let us know, but then leave it for the characters to find out at the very end. And there's no conversation, no nothing. It, it's, it's obnoxious to me. Um, and, and it just, it, it perfectly fits in with, with Titus too, which sucks even more. Um, I, I also didn't like the way the story was presented in the way I didn't feel like it was presented in a way that kept it interesting from the start. The idea that sin keeps terrorizing the world is interesting, but it also brings up a lot of questions as to why the human race still exists, how the summoner's journey even works, and why society seems to believe they are capable of stopping sin. Um, so I'm, I'm sure they probably touch on this a little bit here and there, <clears throat> but to me it's a, a very interesting dynamic that for a thousand years, give or take, you have this cycle of sin killing a bunch of people and then people working to stop sin and then they stop sin for X amount of years and then sin comes back. I feel like, um, I feel like there's too much leeway being given there. If sin has the power to just wipe out you know, all of the human race and whatnot. Why hasn't sin done that? Um, it, it, it just, it brings up those questions. And it's like, well, how did, the, how did even the church survive all this time? If sin knows how to, if sin has a motive, it, it seems like sin's opposition doesn't have a way to stop that motive from occurring. So uh, it's, it's very interesting, especially in the case of, you know, like the summoners, you could just go after all the summoners and kill them. You know where all the summons are. So you could just hang out at the summons. I, I don't know. Uh, I also feel like sin is the antagonist of the game, but our interactions with it are so abstract. It's effectively just a monster that we can't kill, talk to, or understand from their perspective. I like villains that we engage with and have more screen time and interactions, and sin feels like a, less like a villain and more like a moving rock. Uh, yeah, I, I think this one is fairly self-explanatory. Um... I, I like, uh, I like villains that I can interact with, talk to and whatnot. And sin was very much not that, uh, you, you probably have to assume that Seymour is the antagonist here, but 
there's also problems with that, uh, such as the transition from Sin being the primary antagonist to Seymour also feels weird. Seymour feels like a cunning person to the point where he was able to kill his father without anyone knowing, yet he can't or won't try to spin the death of Jiskel to his benefit. Uh, so when we confronted him, I feel like it was totally within Seymour's power or interest or just desire to say like, oh yeah, just gold tried to kill me in my sleep or something like that. So I had to fight back against him and that that's why he died. That, you know, that that's why I killed him. And, you know, obviously he's not going to say that on his little, uh, talking sphere thingy. So there you go. And then, you know, what are we going to believe a talking sphere or are we going to believe Seymour? You know, what has Seymour done to make us not believe him other than the whole Machina thing? You know, he's totally in the clear. Uh, there's also the scenes where the Crusaders mount an attack on Sin using Machina with the blessing of the church, and it just feels out of place. Not only does this not affect any of the characters in any meaningful way, Waka never brings it up again as far as I can remember, uh, but it doesn't even push the plot forward. The Crusaders effectively had no importance despite there being a uh, focus on them. And the only bad things we hear about, uh, I'll bet, are from Waka. Seymour can be seen as a progressionist here as well if you, if you really want to. Uh, if you cut the scene out, does the game change at all? I don't think so. Um, it was certainly cool to see Sin just show up and be like, I am going to destroy everybody. But was it really necessary? Like I said, sin is just a moving rock. So we don't, we don't need any, any justification to believe that sin is, is bad. Like we've already seen sin do bad things. We've heard sin do bad things. So uh, what was the point of that scene other than just to drill it in more, I guess? Uh, the whole deal of the Albed kidnapping summoners because they don't want them to die at the end of their journey is insane. Completely disregarding the fact that the summoners signed up for this, it also means there's nobody to stop Sin. Uh, yeah, this that whole mini plotline also is is very weird to me. I I I feel like there was no no reason why they wanted to to stop summoners from completing the journey other than in the case of Yuna uh, Sid didn't want Yuna to die because they're, they're family but for all the other summoners you know what are you going to do uh, how did Jekt become Sin if he's a dream this the, the whole dream thing is is, is something I need, I, I need more. You can't just say like, oh yeah, you're a dream and you're, you're kept dreaming because of the faith or whatever and just leave it at that. You know, how do dreams do things? How do they interact with, with things? How does a dream uh, get taken over by you, Yevon, or Sin, or, or affect reality? Um, it's, it's all so questionable, I guess. And like, it even brings up the point, why would we, why would we worry about stopping sin in the way that we have with the summoner's journey? If we have the cheat code, Jekt is sin, Jekt is a dream. So why don't we stop the dream rather than try to stop sin and like if you start going in that direction you start playing into the dream aspect it makes the sin aspect all the more interesting because you're now interacting with what sin actually is and how to utilize that information to stop him um which in the case of the game instead we kind of flail about and we just stumble upon the right answers, which doesn't feel good to do. Um, 
let's see. It doesn't feel like there's any overarching plot to latch onto. We're on a journey to stop Sin, who we interact with twice prior to Xanarkand. Uh, but we're also trying to stop Seymour, who just randomly shows up over and over again to stop us. Just going from place to place isn't enough for me. Uh, yeah, I feel like um, there, there isn't... There isn't something, there's, uh, there isn't a, there isn't an overarching plot that I, I felt like was relevant over the course of the game. Sure, our quest is to stop sin and we're going on a journey to collect aeons to do that. But there are multiple instances throughout that story where that plan is, uh, shaken up a bit and, that in of itself isn't necessarily the story. It's just, you know, our motivations and things like that. Um, and so I, it just kind of felt like we're just going from place to place and we're doing the things in front of us without necessarily having the, the plan and the proper motivations built to, um, to make it feel justified. Uh, you know, if, if the church is doing crazy things like using Machina, you know, maybe we need to have more interactions with how the church doing things may not necessarily be the right way to do things. But we don't necessarily have those types of crises of faith uh, and whatnot. It's, it, it's all kind of like, you know, shoved under the rug, I guess. Um, for characters, effectively, none of the characters are likable to me. Titus is a goofball in a dream. Uh, Yuna is naive and stubborn to the detriment of her allies. She tries to marry Seymour so that she can stop him by herself, which is crazy. Uh, she again tries to marry Seymour so that she can send him since he's dead, which by the way, she's given so many opportunities to send him, but just stands around listening to monologues and whatnot. Uh, she walks around the edge of a tall building and threatens to jump if her friends aren't allowed to leave unharmed, then jumps anyway uh, without her friends leaving first. <laughs> I thought that one was super crazy. Uh, Lulu's a jerk. Kamari doesn't talk. Waka is racist. Orin is the type of guy who insists on inserting himself into everyone's business and then lashes out at people for trying to get in his business. He is also a jerk. Uh, Riku basically serves no purpose and offers nothing of value to the group. In fact, you know, I, I would, I would argue Kamari, uh, serves no purpose. Waka serves no purpose. Even Lulu doesn't serve no purpose. Um, like Titus, Titus has his attachment to Jekt, who is also Sin. So by correlation, Titus is important. Yuna is the most important person of the game. You know, she's the one that's going to save the world. And Oren is the guy who is uh, leading Yuna to basically do what he wants her to do. Everyone else is just kind of there. It's, you know, it's tough. Uh, for gameplay mechanics and design, what gameplay elements stand out? Uh, again, I don't have very much written down. Uh, the sphere grid, uh, feels like it has a lot going, uh, going on for something that offers so little. I really dislike they have to spend sphere levels to retread areas already unlocked. Uh, it's very overwhelming with the amount of nodes available and perceived places one can travel to. Uh, if you've ever played a game called Path of Exile and looked at the talent tree for that, the sphere grid reminds me of that a lot. Um, it's... It's a lot of bam in your face information. And once, once you spend X amount of time uh, in the, the sphere grid or the talent tree, then you have an understanding of where things are and where you want to go and how you want to get there and what things you need to use to get there. But that investment is pretty significant. It definitely makes me... I've mentioned this before. It makes me understand how we went from Final Fantasy X's uh, sphere grid system to Final Fantasy XIII's system. 
Um, like that seems like a natural progression based off of how Final Fantasy X's system works. Uh, or at least one of the natural progressions. Maybe not the. Uh, for combat, I like that each character has a specialization of sorts. I thought it was really neat that, you know, uh, it, like each character kind of has a class, but they don't necessarily have to stick to that class if you don't want them to, but they are heavily leaned into that class. So for some characters, it might not be as feasible to move them in other directions. Um, I did feel like I needed to rely on keeping characters leveled based on past experience, though. Uh, in practice, it does feel warranted because of how each character does their own thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I, uh, we'll get to Cardinal Sins here in a, a hot second, but um, it, it's one of those things where just give backup party members full experience. It, it's, it's, it's easier that way. It makes the players happy because they can use whoever the sukkapu they want. It's, it's already difficult enough as it is in this game for me to just build up money to buy all the things that I want. I was poor the entire game. You know, the, the last weapons there at the end, they cost 75,000. I had like 100,000. I could buy one weapon. Uh, let's see. I'm disappointed that if the active party dies, it's game over. The reserve party should come in and it feels warranted. This, this also bothered me quite a lot. I, I did not get a, a ton of game overs uh, throughout the game, but for how much investment the game wants you to put into the characters and how much swapping in and out and uh, you know all the equipment that uh, uh, they give you access to and whatnot, it, it feels like you should be able to set up the first party to do something, have them die, and then the second party comes in. Uh, it, it just makes sense that way. Um, I'll, I'll also touch on this because I didn't mention this, but I do like the weapon system and the armor system for this. I like that... Um, not only can I swap out those weapons in combat and i think armor as well uh in in combat to change my strategies but uh each weapon and armor has little differences to them and little abilities to them that make them stronger or worse or different and i valued that a lot i i think that's a really nice system where weapons don't necessarily give you stats they just give you like passive abilities and things like that. And I, I, I enjoy those aspects. Uh, for dungeons, I don't have any favorite dungeons. Um, I can't recall any practical dungeon design issues. I will say that it, it's a little ridiculous to have your summoners go on a journey and solve puzzles before they can get the summon to save the world. You, you would think that if you want to save the world as quickly as possible with uh, the least amount of people dying in the process, you would make it as easy as possible for the summoners to get access to the Aeons. But I guess not. Uh, for Cardinal Sins, removing key party members without sufficient replacement, Yuna, Kimari, and probably many others. Uh, forcing the player to use certain party members or solo fights. Backup party earns less experience. Zero percent, in fact. Um, main story missions are side quests. We had to do Blitzball for a while. Uh, unskippable cutscenes before a boss. This is a new one. Thanks to the power of Final Fantasy X. Uh, and I think that's it uh, for Cardinal Sins. For miscellaneous sound and music. Uh, there were some tracks in here that I really enjoyed. I think there are a lot of tracks that at least I felt were played more than others. And I know the Final Fantasy X soundtrack has a lot of tracks on it. So um, it's definitely something where I'm going to have to revisit this soundtrack and, you know, check it out. Maybe I can, you know, craft a couple beats out of it, you know, do that stuff. Uh, voice acting. I think the voice acting was fine. You know, I don't have any problems with it. 
Uh, for graphics, I think the graphics were good. Um, you know, animations were solid and things like that. Uh, if it's a sequel, does it achieve more of the same? It's not a sequel. Is the game worth recommending? Uh, here's the thing. I went through this game. I, I knew basically the stories and things like that. But um, I, I went through like the mechanics and things like that. Very casual. It may not have been like 100% blind, but it was probably like 92% uh, blind. You know, it was like maybe a couple of things that I remembered. Um, and getting to the point that I did in the Ject fight, that fight is a hard wall. Um, and that, that's totally disregarding the Zombify Seymour fight in Mount Gungaga as well. Uh, that fight is also a hard wall. And on one hand, it's like, oh, you know, you can maybe do some stuff to, you know, solve that or whatever. But... I feel like uh, when, when you come across bosses like that, where you're going to have to do multiple attempts and you're going to have to watch these insane cutscenes before the, the bosses and whatnot, it, to me, it just screams, stop trying, go look up a guide or go online or something like that and just figure, like, learn the solution elsewhere and then apply the solution in the game. Um, because when I first played this game, I stopped at that Zombify Seymour fight. It was just too tough. I skipped out on too many encounters. I was just having a really hard time um, in the area in general, which when I got there for here and in this playthrough, I had done, I had swapped out characters almost every battle and all of my characters, and I had fought almost every battle up until that point. Um, and I was still getting my butt kicked. So I, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's crazy. So uh, I, I would say that um, the game is worth recommending, but I would put an asterisk there and say, um, don't like uh keep keep a guide handy just in case because it'll it'll save you some time or, or you can play on an emulator um that that you know if, if that's an option for you you know you can also do that and you could just save state right before the boss and then you don't have to worry about it oh, i wish i played on an emulator uh if the developer is watching uh, for me, uh, I, I think the mechanics of this game are definitely um, the thing that makes it shine. I think the story of this game is what I feel is the centerpiece. I think it tries to set up its characters and its world to do very specific things. And unfortunately, just those those setups and those executions and those payoffs didn't necessarily hit the way that i had hoped they would um i think this is a problem in many games out there but in particular final fantasy 10 giving us a protagonist that just doesn't matter and and doesn't really mean anything and it's made even worse because he's a dream, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, I, I understand you want to, you know, have a, a more relatable, uh, you know, minus the dream part, more relatable main protagonist controlled character and things like that. But, uh, if, if I just got to play Yuna, and, you know, Titus could still be in the party, but if I just got to play Yuna and I got to see her perspective on things and, and hear her internal monologues and, and, you know, how she wants to do things at any given time 
and kind of hear her struggles, hear her talk to Lulu and things like that, hear her talk to Kimari. Um, it would have just, it, it would have landed this game better because the game is about Yuna. So we should be playing Yuna. But for whatever reason, we did not. Um, so yeah, just to reiterate my overall thoughts, um, you know, I'm not really a fan of the game. The, the game is fine. I, I, you know, mechanically, uh, you know, whole package wise and things like that, you know, the game sets out to what it does. It just doesn't do the things that I, uh, uh, latch on to is all. Uh, but that's going to be the end of my thoughts. I'm going to mark and I'm just going to catch up on chat real quick. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see if that, uh, if I'm including that stuff. Uh, la, 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 la. Titus is a sucker. I agree. Game with Orin as the pro tag. Your objective is nothing uh to do with stopping sin you just involve yourself in everyone's business Oren would have been a cool protagonist as well the guy freaking dies and and you know since he doesn't get sent he's now trying to insert himself into the summoner's journey so that he can move them on the right path or at least the path that he feels is necessary you know i i wouldn't be mad at an Oren protagonist either from the common human side uh not like they know any better. That's true. You also question how Bavel managed to stay standing all these years. I, I get that Maester Micah is, you know, an immortal, basically. But, you know, everyone else is not. So, it, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Can't believe Final Fantasy X copy Path of Exile. I know. It's crazy. Final Fantasy X is definitely an idea game for you. There's lots of ideas uh, that you like, uh, that you like they have here, but there's a ton of execution that is not here. Uh, I, you know what? I would agree with that. Uh, sticking with the Path of Exile correlation here, I feel like the customization there. There's not a lot of games out there that give you the ability to move in the opposite direction of where a, that character is meant to go. You know, you could send Lulu into the orange tree and you could put, you can make Lulu an Oren if, if you really wanted to. And that sounds interesting. And you, you, you probably can't come across very many games that allow you to do that. Clearly don't want idiot summoners botching the journey. I, I so so they would rather summoners die on the journey and have no summoners even be able to try? Come on, come on. I hear Brady guy. Is Brady guy still still in business? Uh, it does show its age for sure. Um You know, I, I feel like I feel like there is an aspect here where the age of the game does factor in to it. You know, the, it's, there, there are old ideas here, but I don't actually think that this game feels old. It, it does have those old identifiers, but I don't think it feels old. If they released Final Fantasy X today, it, it, it wouldn't be that outdated in my eyes. But maybe I'm crazy. Bill Titus knowing nothing was a gateway to allow devs to explain things in a dummy's way to the player. That's typically how JRPGs work. Yeah. Uh, you mean it works? Part of 13's problem, and you enjoy the games, is throwing a bunch of jargons and things the characters know, but not the player. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a, a balancing aspect to that. Uh... uh so glad I don't have to hear La C come out of those characters' mouths again. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for me for today. I will be back tomorrow, 7 a.m. Pacific time, to continue playing something. We'll figure out what that is when that time comes. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm late for my tacos, so time to go. I'm out. Peace.